Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast. I'm your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, Hero of Reich, Defender of the Fatherland. Here to deliver on to your eyes and ears another glorious propaganda cast filled with tactical and strategic analysis. Of course, all to deal with that lovely historical flair. We shall be having a one versus one on Holotniferma. Yes, indeed, Holotniferma. One of the oldest maps in Combat Heroes 2. We shall be watching Messi Panda fighting for the 10th Guards Mechanized Corps, going up against T.E. Ceridius fighting for the 5th SS Panzer Division Viking. And we are noting here an empty start here right away from Ceridius. That is definitely a bit uncommon, definitely not some unity, unless something who's rather competent in this. Confident in this skills, I was about to say. Not necessarily competent. Confident. Though competence certainly does not necessarily always designate skill. Of course, we've seen conscripts popping up there in the meanwhile for Messi Panda, his pine combat engineers heading northwards. And of course, it's a bit tricky still getting replays because there was another patch last night. So, of course, once more, a lot of replays got wiped out. And that's in fact one of the things I would like to apologize for all of those who sent in replays during the period I was away. Sadly, I can't cast any of them again. They pretty much come out of sync. Again, they're not with the corresponding responding version number, which of course is quite sad, but you know, keep sending them. And so on. We should certainly not be disheartened. And there we go, second consequence squad. Note here was actually doing right away, he's basically just going, ooh, rah, to get them moving quicker out to the battlefield. It's certainly something I'm slightly experimenting with myself. You know, a bit of, ooh, rah, get moving, you stupid lazy bastards, out in the fields. And we have seen Grandier Squawk there next up for Ceridius. What shall be his next unit? The MG42 being rather aggressively sent on a northern route. Might be meeting up with the Grenadiers. Might rush into that house. But he needs to be very careful here. This could easily end up very, very unfortunately for the MG crew. Since it's not going to have anything spot in the way for it. It could easily be outflanked, maneuvered, or whatever. And there we go. Ura, but no. Ura does not give you protection against. Suppression, as some players like to think. Instead, it rushes you just a bit quicker into the line of fire and thus quicker to get gunned down. In this case, we do see Alexander getting murdered right there. And his friends then rather going, ah, killed. Anyways, gonna do up the center position, ready to support with the MG42 if need be. Pioneers running into some nasty conscripts down south, and we're seeing a sniper out second. This is a very curious build going on there from Ceridius. And it is continuing to hold up the center. And we are immediately seeing here that Messi Panda is going for the support weapon Campanella. He's got two squads of conscripts and a combat engineer squad. And he's then moving towards the support weapon Campanella. So we might be seeing heavy machine guns and mortars already. That's Some definitely going to be interesting. Be this is already turning out to be a not secure. the usual sort of thing. It is what we're used to seeing at the moment. No, certainly this is also the stage where there's definitely going to be more experimentation with builds and of course a mortar then so he's basically getting one of every unit looking at things that's definitely interesting but also requires him playing very tightly actually he needs to be not getting too aggressive otherwise the element the elements and note the most of these are going to be support elements and they're definitely not going to hold up very long if they get caught out on its own that is something Ceridius needs to be ridiculously careful with. Otherwise, it's going to get very, very painful. Pioneers on a northbound road. Now go the conscripts once more getting stopped by the MG42. Again, note cover his direction. In this case, Boris and Fedorov stack their heads out a bit too far, and are currently getting punished for it. In fact, the rest of the squad is pinned to the ground. Sniper sneak up. They need to be careful, though. Again. Snipers are not exactly something you should be sending out on their own. This is not company heroes. If you think it is, go sort yourself. Well, there we go. We are seeing a Maxim machine gun rolling out. The Maxim, of course, there's also a heavier one ready for the Soviets, but that's not currently available. Likely will be. Pioneers getting company is being pushed away there. Mortar up. And I wonder what Ceres will be doing now. Up north, the heavy machine gun continues moving in. Taking up precision by the fence, going to shoot the fascists. And immediately we're seeing a heavy exchange between the two machine guns, Maxim versus MG42. And already the fence simply splinters under the intense fire from the German machine gun. Further fighting going on down south. Grenadiers could be considered upgrade with the MG42. And there we go, taking up. So this is a 1-1-1 one, one, one 
one one build? I know. Lots of ones either way. We called it 4 1 build or something like that. And there you go, Glennon is already suffering a slight loss there. Again, an MD 42 might have to help them a bit there. And oh, there we go, we do see them retreating as the mortar ranges in on the MD crew as well, or at least attempts to. Another squad of conscripts falling out there from Mezu Panda. And another heavy machine gun, so clearly the guards mechanized troops are just rushing in and things to at least hold the line until the tankists can arrive. Grenadiers. Going there for the cutoff point, nice move there it's by Ceridius, but at the same time he doesn't really have much to hold this because he didn't even bother upgrading and again he's also lacking in infantry in that sense. Ceridius is overextending himself rather grievously and needs to be really careful about that. Otherwise he could very soon find himself with some very heavy casualties. And we're seeing the Maxim taking up position the shit there. Rav grenade down to one man, Heinz fires. Gets veteran to one, but needs to get out of there. And there you go, the Maxim opens up, and there you go, retreat straight into the Maxim. Can he survive this? Or will he be a very unlucky grenadier? Nope, he manages it somehow, he manages it. Currently, though, the Germans are holding most of the map through some very aggressive play. Flam Ceridius, also a bit fortunate in many senses, they've been able to catch up, and Messi Panda. Right here might have played into his hand by going for that support weapon company and then going for machine guns because that rather slowed down everything, slowed down the tempo instead of getting more conscripts which then overwhelmed Ceridius. So that of course is the slightly problematic aspect of what Messi Panda did and now we're seeing the snub here finding a way. Conscripts moving in, down to two men, they need to be careful. There we go, one man left. And looks like he ran for it. Flame first pushing up north. Medic bunker like going to go up there and already tier 3 researched. Bit of quiet, the sniper advances. And here, Sididis is being a bit foolhardy, I think, sitting in a sniper on his own. I mean, if anything goes wrong, he's going to need to retreat him. And if he retreats up here, for example, he's going to run into some very nasty problems. Maxim in the church forces away. The mortar crew for the Maxim is ready to extol the virtues of Stalinism to the congregation. Reporting sector capture. Sniper reporting. Sniper reporting. Flamethrower versus MG42 needs to be careful here. And. Oh, flamethrower tank. First open, killing Boris, wielding it, and there you go, finally getting the MG42 upgrade for his grenadiers, about bleed in time, we are seeing the support armor core going up for Ceridius, points there being secured, all of these conscripts need to get to a fire because they're about to get very, very stiff and cold. And there we go, sniper lost to Ceridius, again he should not have been moved about like that. That was definitely some bold, but also a bit foolhardy moves there by Ceridius, and he lost the sniper sadly a bit aimlessly. Though we also now see the 82mm water moving out there for the Russians, going to bomb out the fascist machine and Gewehr from the farmhouse. And again, we're noting that the rather low count of infantry units for Ceridius is currently playing a bit against him. And we are seeing here that Messi Panda is getting back with a bit of a vengeance. Also looks like he's going to go straight for the Panzer IV. And we're also noting here he's actually gone for the new Doctrine, the Spearhead Doctrine, which goes Panzer Tactician, Recon Overflight, Mortar half -tack, Tiger Tank, and Frack Mention Bombs. It's a very vehicle-based one, but can also be combined to notice serve with infantry at the same time, though. <coughs> so a very mobile one. Leading the spearhead of the 5th SS. Kennedy here being caught between two Maxims. Get them out of there, sir. It is. Buxuk. Buxuk. There you go, veterans. One, come on, sir. It is. Get your Kennedys out of there. They're not bulletproof. I hope you haven't been buying into all that propaganda. And not mine, by the way. And there we go, Pioneers getting murdered very slowly. Again, this 
cross fire machine gun is very lethal to the German infantry. There we go, in fact, the mortar gun pushed away. And so now there's nothing at all blocking the advance of the pioneers. Again, that's a good problem of the current unit composition. That's who it is. As one something goes, the rest has to go as well because there's nothing to hold. So in that sense, it is has really created himself a nasty problem. Although the Panzer IV might sort it out, but as you can see, Messi Panda knows something is not right. He knows he's not seeing a lot. Besides a few units, he knows there's slightly some sort of armored rush on the way. So it's already getting field guns. The SIS 76 mm divisional field gun. I'd rather have the Soviets operate like with things. They rather prefer things, you know, that served a dual role, you know, besides the being shooting up tanks that could also function as artillery. In that sense, you know, a bit like a Stug, except, you know, less armored, less mobile. Again, the Germans, you know, like the Stug because, again, it was a flexible thing. It could shoot up infantry, it could shoot up tanks. The difference was the field gun was a bit rubbish in some regards because it wasn't fully rifled. I believe, anyway, some of the other field guns of these were. Well, there we go, Fang Wei actually had a barrage. He's trying to get the mortar crew and knock out the artillery support, but at the same time, he's rather seeing himself a bit nastily there. And there we go, in fact, he allowed the Panzer IV to get behind him. That was definitely not well played there by Messi Panda. And that was definitely a bit messy, although we do, you know, not. That's another machine gun, rather interesting. I don't think he needs small maxims, but apparently, Messi Panda disagrees. And there you go, the field gun is close to going down. And flamethrower moving up, burning out the occupants of the church. And there you go, burst into flames going though. They're securing most of the map now though. But how long will it last in the face of the Panzerkampfwagen fear? From one of the two Panzer battalions in the Panzer Division, usually each Panzer Division by 1944 would have two battalions of Panzers. One would be with Panthers, the other with Panzer Force, although usually the Panzer IV battalion was more likely to contain Stugs and other things. They basically, to make up for the fact they not necessarily always couldn't get Panzer Force. And there you go, anti tank grenade and a Molotov to deter the pioneers from pairing it, likely going to get another field gun, possibly. But there we go, getting into the wooden shed, getting knocked out by the Panzer IV. That was definitely not so well played by. Mr. Messi Panda, and it's time to look at the Panda of Messiness, who's gone for the Shock Rifle Doctrine, which means KV-8s, IS-2s, and Shock Troopers getting in some very heavy infantry now. Troops have arrived. Hang on. Well, fancy that. Previously, you actually had to upgrade them with the submachine guns, but now they just free that. Squad at full strength. Ah, huh. it's also been made more expensive, which oh. makes sense. Makes them less spammable. What is it? But I rather hadn't noticed Our that. Is falling into enemy hands. Well, good to know. More Living and learning all that. Hey, machine gun taking up position that farm building, to going for a northern push, going for the response there while the Germans are moving south. MG crew again. Ceridius playing overly aggressive, extending troops into positions where they're not really able to going to hold if anything goes remotely wrong. Panzer IV getting repaired, mortar firing away, one Enemy kill, and Panzer Gunnelis is back, check to the life of the Mechanized Company, getting some Grenade! proper Shot infantry support, Gunnelis getting stopped by the Maxim, and then we actually hasn't bothered anything with the field guns, so we see some conscripts sneaking in, taking it back, although apparently some are still stuck on the field gun. And there you go, conscripts are something straight into the Panzer IV's line of fire, there you go, field gun firing away, Penetrating the frontal armor, it seems like, and there go anti tank grenade. Almost down to the Less than half of now. Mortar continues to blast away at the fascists. Another squad of pens are going to do that. Sorry, this. Point secured down there. Oops, need to set the microphone again. My apologies. And another blizzard sets in, troops reinforcing, getting healed. Oh no, he actually moved the MD-42 ahead, and there we go, getting spotted by the shock troops. Oh no, he's... Oh, Sirius. Oh dear. 
Again, why you really shouldn't be moving in your MGs on their own into enemy hostile territory. So yeah, a swift lesson there displayed by Ceridius. In meanwhile, Panzergun is moving north, Panzergun is moving south. Panzer 4 getting repaired again, although very close to Veterans 1. And it could be that Mr. Messi Panda is basically just going to go straight for the IS-2. He's definitely saving up fuel. And he's basically just relying on the combined, you know, bits of the support weapon company and then using shock troops to basically get himself some nicely rounded action right there. Another MG running into trouble. But basically that way he doesn't have to spend a lot of resource towards building and can basically just hold his way out to the IS-2 as long as Sirius doesn't do something Awfully clever. Now we've got another anti tank grenade. Pioneers are following up. And of course, he could consider, and in fact, looks like he is preparing ambush tactics. Pioneers start trying to repair the Panzer Fort during the blizzard while under fire. So it is. Might have slightly overestimated the ability of his pioneers right there. Panzer 4 rolling back. This, by the way, is probably the Model H. There was the final model, the Model 8J, which had a slower revolving turret and some messier armored skirts since they were basically not really bothering with anti-tank rifles at that stage. And finally, it had a larger fuel tank, which was a bit con odd considering they barely had any fuel back there by that stage. It was also much, much easier to produce than the earlier models. We're trying to get out of there, and in that sense, I mean, the Blizzard really helped, but of course, he still got the Panzer Titian ability. If he was to use that cleverly, he could, you know, speed away, blow his, use the Blitzkrieg, as if that even works with a damaged engine, pop some smoke, and that way, get out of there. But so far, he's not really displayed any usage of the ability, which is definitely a bit of a shame. Veterans 2 machine gun there. Troops are moving in, and he definitely needs to support that panzer with the infantry. We are getting awfully much closer to that IS-2. Shock troops here coming under fire, and again, that's why it's so expensive. I mean, basically, you can just combine it with the right building, and... Well, basically, you don't need to do much else but wait, you know, fight the fascists. And there we go, firing at the rear. Come on, get the Panzer IV moving. Pop smoke, pop smoke. Fritz Nebelkatzen, come on, something. No, he's joining the frontal armor. He needs to get it moving. Get it moving, pop smoke. Come on, Ceridius, smoke. And sadly, he did not do it. That was definitely a huge blunder right there by Ceridius. He should have popped the smoke. He should have gotten out there. And I have absolutely no idea why he failed to use the smoke. Dark. So yeah, that was pretty odd. That Panzer IV could have been saved. Instead, now it's, well, debris. But we are seeing Servidius making some good ground back now, that he's getting in some infantry himself, some more infantry. In this case, Panzer gun is, but gun would also likely serve the trick. And of course the gun it is with the MDs is definitely also helping. Shock troops moving in though. Quick grenade against the Grenadiers. Ooh, that really didn't do much. But the Grenadiers need to retreat. Wuxuk Mina, Wuxuk. And we're also seeing here KB8 is getting prepared, but I don't think he's going to use that right away since he's likely setting up for that IS-2. And of course on the other side of the fence, we're likely going to be seeing that with the Spirit Doctrine that Mr. Ceridius is saving up for the Tiger tank. But for now we're seeing a second Panzer Kampfwagen fear. There we go, Grenadiers running to be a problem down to one man. Can they make it out of there? And the Panzer is getting stopped there by the Maxim. Some conscripts hiding up there. He might have done that by accident. You need to be careful about, you know, popping units into buildings at far remote corners. You might forget them. There you go, Molotov against the Panzer, and it's already one bursting into flames, another one might. Oh dear, oh dear, and there we go, forced retreat. Oorahing in, through the flames, less good. 
Messi Panda is still holding on in the name of Comrade Stalin. And the Pandas are going to be a man. MG42 is doing what he can as well. Fire being poured all over those conscripts. Veterans are free, by the way, but that's not going to help much against a flamethrower. There we go. One bursting into flames. One man left. Need to get out of there. Come on. Come on. Oh dear, that was definitely less well fought up there by Messi Panda. Popping back those is Iridius. The results are very close to the Tiger. And I mean, so far, and that's also what I would say is a bit of a shame. He's only really used, he's not used to doctrine at all. The rest of the doctrine, no mortar effects, no recon, no smoke. I mean, if you're just going to get a doctrine just to use a single ability, you might want to reconsider that doctrine usage. And of course, it's still a Tiger tank, but I mean, if. You know, Mr. Messi Panda perhaps and also been playing a bit more aggressively again, had more infantry earlier on. Things could have been looking very differently. And of course, use more mines. I mean, I'm really lacking some mines on the behalf of other player, but in particular the Russian player. The shock was here tearing through the pioneers. That's the SS. <coughs> Panzer IV making short work of these shock troopers. And we're seeing fuel caches, considering the employment of it. I mean, I would have thought here would have been a better spot, you know, closer to your actual base. Easier to defend rather than, you know, here where it could much easier be destroyed. Is that something I would rather count, point out as being slightly awkward? There you go, Maxim under fire. Veterans here too. Panzer Kampfang here rolls forward. Panzer Grenadiers and Grenadiers launching an assault strike right there. The conscripts, they're not looking too good there. At the same time, though, the IS-2 heavy tank rolls out. And I do believe it's time for the mid-game analysis. But there we go, IS-2 heavy tank. That's definitely going to be a problem right there for Ceridius. But mid-game analysis, current situation is Ceridius is making slight gains back again. But Messi Panda is making some good progress well. He's done a lot of damage. He's forced him back. And again, he's cost him a lot of valuable units, which again is a bit the problem. So really, it's early on played awfully aggressively. It compared, how should one put it, not quite coherent. And that rather allowed Messi Panda to get back. But Messi Panda at the same time could also have done so had he just had more infantry. The whole getting lots of machine guns at that stage rather set him back actually by a bit because he couldn't really push aggressively. And he rather refused to push aggressively with them. But now with an IS-2, he's definitely got a chance of really making some nasty games. But again, that requires him to play aggressively, but also supporting it properly with combat engineers and infantry. Because he's going to need to keep that one repaired at all times. And of course, it also would have been nice to see him actually lay down some mines. And he should still should do it. Mine the roads, make it harder for the Germans to move about. And you know, kill a few there while only expending munitions. For Ceridius, he needs, of course, to make some gains as well. He needs to get some fuel. He's got a hundred, and his opponent's got a tiger tank. If he was IS2, if he wants a tiger tank, he's going to need 250. And at the current rate that he's getting, we're talking about, oh, I don't know, five to six minutes before he actually has what he needs, about seven, in fact. And an IS2 can do an awful lot of damage in that time period if he's not careful. So that is something, you know, he needs to rectify. And again, more fuel caches, in fact, he's there, but still he's not building them in the more safer areas. Which is a bit of a problem for him again. But, you know, hold the line, perhaps consider getting at least a single pack. To at least act as a sort of deterrent, you know, secure the nearby areas. Perhaps the center, and, you know, otherwise hold out, I suppose. And try not to lose any units senselessly to the IS-2. There we go, Panzer IV in the north. Panzer is going to be moving north as well. Nothing's reporting the Panther. A Panzer in case you know someone sneaks up with anti-tank grenades or a field gun. We're seeing the mortar holding fire in fact. We're seeing the IS-2 moving up as well. And there we go, 122mm gun firing out there, the Panzer can fucking fear. And there we go, the building collapses in its entirety. Grenadiers are moving forward. What are you doing? What are you doing, Ceridius? You know the ice tube's there. That's only not considered a good idea. Location captured. Blizzard imminent. 
What are you doing, Zeridius? What are you doing? And there you go, the eyes to watch the rest of the squad in a few nasty seconds. Again, it's a very nasty with its high explosive shells and of course that 50 caliber machine gun on top. Panzer is moving in, but needs to be careful again. And there's absolutely no infantry support, by the way, for the eyes too, which is not a good idea at all. It seems like most of it is moving south, securing up that. But I really would have loved to have seen some sort of support for the eyes too. Mortar crew being sent in. Messy Panda getting rather messy, I suppose, living up to his namesake. Fuel caches getting great, and we're seeing three fuel caches, but again, that's going to be a lot of manpower on those two going out the window. Not entirely sure what Messi Panda is trying to achieve here. With his heavy breakthrough tank, as that was its intended purpose, breaking through enemy lines with quite a bit of firepower. They could blow up tanks as well quite nicely, was. Well, more of a beneficial side effect, to be honest. Panzer is there, survive the first shot, but need to be careful against so Iridius. You seem to be playing awfully much with the fire, in this case, the fire of the Josef Stalin tank. Second shot also fails to do a lot, but of course, it's still the 50 cal as well. His luck can't keep lasting, though. And there we go, entire Panzer squad wiped out. I mean, he really needs to just get out of there as soon as he sees the IS-2 and he's nothing to actually hold it back. I have no idea why he's insistent on wasting valuable German infantry in front of such a beast. As he can, with one shot more or less, actually wipe out entire squads of infantry. So that is something that needs to be, you know, taken into consideration. More Panzer has been popped out there for the fifth. Panzer four rolling southwards. And once more moving the MG42 in. Sirius continues to make that rather nasty fumble. Veterans two and veterans one shock troopers all of a sudden. Getting burned with the fires of the fatherland. Troops being prepared. There we go. Pioneers on the run and dead. Standing by. And there we go, the ice 2 is moving in, Panzer 4 needs to be careful, first shot blows up a wrecked one, serving as a warning what will happen to it itself. Next shot misses though, Panzer 4 still takes a bit of damage from it. The enemy is taking our territory. Might want to move back further, but no, Panzer is moving up with Panzer Schrecks, Raketen Panzerbüchse. Strains with the IS-2's path, and there we go, one hit, and the machine guns also tear quite a bit into the Panzer Grenadiers. No, oh, get them back, get them back, Ceridius. And there we go, almost wiped out. Again, that main gun is dangerous. Downright lethal, and there we go, Panzer for moves and gets off a nice hit on the rear. Well done, well done, Ceridius. That was at least nice and bold. They'll be ready to use smoke to get out of there. Continues to fire, continues to fire. Needs to be careful now, those field guns are moving up. Panzer like on the shock troopers. And that IS-2 needs repairs, but it seems like Messi Panda has no combat engineers. No combat engineers at all. I mean, if you're going to have a heavy tank, you're going to need the requisite infantry to support it, which involves pioneers, as the Germans, combat engineers, as the Soviets. I mean, really, that should not be a deceptive riddle to figure out. Nor a steep requirement, I fear. And of course, you could still consider getting a mortar half track, but I suppose at this stage it's not going to do much. But three squads of shock troopers, and of course, I mean, shock trooper spam's definitely taken a bit to the kneecap with that increase in manpower cost, which is definitely something I support. 
No worries there. But troops are doing what they can all over the place. MG again, he continues sending in that MG again. I think so. It is might be slightly low, overestimating his luck. And there you go, grenade almost wipes it out. More Panzers following up now. He's heavily equipping them all with Panzer Sphex. Still nothing in the repair. The oh, there we go. Finally, getting some combat units up. They need to quickly get there. And I think he at least needs two squads. Three squads would be the best. And he also needs to turn the eyes too. Also noting here, the field guns not so well placed. In fact, he might want to you know set up a cordon to sort of control an area. But turn the eyes to get it repaired. Come on. We're getting very close to the tiger tank. He's also floating a ridiculous amount of manpower. We really might want to look into that one. No point in floating again if you don't know what to use it on. Just build stuff. That one's always a good tip, I would say. Let we get all to turn in a more beneficial direction. Shock troops here getting blasted into the dirt. But again, a second squad of combat engineers would be beneficial here to quickly get it repaired. And uh, more Panzers are going to simply be rushed in now from the 5th SS. It looks like the Tiger Tank is on the way from some Schwerer SS Panzerabteilung. Previously, some of the uh, in the early stages of the Tiger Tank, when it was on the field, some of the SS Panzer divisions did have their own companies, include, but that was later well formed into the heavy tank battalions. Alongside the other ones, the only division to really continue to having its own company of Tiger Tanks was the Groß Deutschland Panzer Grenadier Division. And of course, in that regard, it was quite unique. What do you need? Our forces increase. The only other unit to sort of have its own battalion of tiger tanks, for that matter, was the Schwerer Panzerregiment Beke, which was more of an ad hoc unit with a full set of them. The Panzer is moving up, getting murdered there by the 50 cal. Of course, the 50 cal has no problem dealing with German infantry and their armor. There you go, Panzer IV versus IS-2. Needs to be careful though. And that field gun's still not been recruited. And he's not repairing, he might try to recruit. In fact, right in front of the Panzer gun it is. Ah, come on, Messi Panda. Stop being messy. And there we go, veterans he two for the Panzer IV. And he's just sacrificed an entire combat engineer unit. I Meaning he can't get it fully repaired. Ach du lieber. And there we go, the Tiger tank is on the way. This is not going in the way of Messi Panda again. He plays messily and not in the good way. Panzer 4 needs to be careful. Well, he needs to pull back the IS-2. And there we go. Tiger tank rolling up. Field gun cleared out. IS-2 needs to get away. Needs to get away. Needs to get away. Veterans want. Come on. Come on, Messi Panda. No. Crew got shocked by the Tiger tank. As the Tiger tank now has a chance of shocking the crew if it fails to penetrate. Come on, pull it out of there. It's barely got any help. It's got a Tiger firing into the side. And there we go. Tiger tank blows it up in the name of the fatherland. Hip hip hooray and all that. Panzer IV rolling away. And now there's a Tiger tank on the loose. Again, that was a huge blunder by Messi Panda, and that really should not have happened. Veterans, free shock troopers, though, but they need to get out there as well. Panzers versus two field guns. Again, there's a lack of infantry now. There's a lack of severe cohesion on the behalf of Messi Panda. As now the Germans are just tearing into them, they have, by the looks of it, broken Messi Panda's back, and it's utter chaos, utter pandemonium. We still got a mortar. We've seen more shock troops, but they are an expensive now unit to get, and I'm not entirely sure that Messi Panda is realizing that. But another grenade right there in the Panzer Grenadiers, wiping out the entire squad there with a mortar and a grenade. And there you go, Tiger moving up. 
initially formed with some very veteran crews from other tank units that were later of course at more direct type training schools but still they were usually quite something else now you've got a second IS-2 rolling out there for Messi Panda opening up on the side of the Tiger tank not entirely sure why the IS-2 is not pursuing I almost felt that. Heavy Panzer under attack. You can love that one. Come on, I used to. You're being a bit slow, a bit messy. The new unit has arrived. So in that regard, Messi Panda gave Cerulean's Tiger Tank plenty of time to escape, which is a definite shame. Now we also seen the veterans E2 Panzer IV rolling out. Shock Troop is not fully reinforced and bring up with a Panzer Schreck. Nice penetrating hit there on the Tiger Tank. And Panzer IV getting hit there as well. Panzer Shock Troopers need to get out there. Shock Troopers need to retreat. And of course now I've seen that Messi Panda is in dire straits. In fact it's time to look at Messi Panda. Tiger Tank, Panzer IV moving up. Panzer Gun is in the wake. Tiger tank was a surprisingly fast tank, although it was rather hard capped not to be so, because otherwise there was a chance the engine would break down more often. Though I would not be surprised if some of the more, I should want to say, sneaky drivers and engineers might have modified it a bit out in the field. But basically, when not like that, it could actually drive as fast as a Sherman. And it also, and that's perhaps not so shown in the game, but actually had the ability to turn 180 degrees in about a few seconds. So that is a bit of a fun fact about the Tiger tank. It was actually a surprisingly nimble tank considering its huge size. Not something you actually hear a lot about. So there's that. The blizzard is gone. Certainly an iconic tank, and it looks really great here in Communist 2 with all the details on it. Shot conscripts now being rushed straight into the line of fire. Shock troops here running into Pentacles and the MG42 supporting him. And they just need to get out of there. There you go, Tiger Tank advancing. IS-2 not looking too well. Will there be an anti-tank grenade? Apparently not. Heavy infantry losses once more. And we're seeing incendiary artillery getting called in on the Tiger to clear out any supporting infantry. Panzer is actually burning up. He's not pulling them out. And there we go. The entire crew vanished in the fire. Tiger tank, by the way, down to half health. And of course, this is the thing with the IS-2, by the way. I mean, it will always do damage. Even if the shot fails to penetrate, it will do damage. And there we go, Tiger Tank shots again. But again, lacking in the combat engineers to quickly repair it and put it together. Very disappointing Messi Panda for that department. Shock tools moving up here, making their way for all the Panzer Grenadiers, and getting suppressed, of course. Come on, you move the eyes to in. You have the re-exposed. Come on, Messi Panda. You have an excellent opportunity here to. Oh, Messi Panda, you klutz. Meanwhile, the shock tools here are suffering rather gravely in the front of the Panzer Grenadiers and the MD42. But fresh combat engineers at the very least, but again a failed opportunity to perhaps get a Tiger tank. I mean Messi Panda really lacks that pursuit ability at times. And in that sense we are seeing that Cerritos actually displaying a much better unit preservation when it comes to his tanks. Less so with infantry but at least with the tanks 
he knows, you know, for the larger part, I have to keep them alive, though, again. Smoke, Cerulius. Smoke, you've gone for the doctrine that has to use it, man. I mean, I'm really amazed he's not used a smoke discharger even once. And that really shouldn't be happening. And we actually see a KV-8 rolling out here going to deal with the infantry. Burn the fascists alive. For the fires of the Rodina. And these veterans these shock troops are just making short work of everything in front of them. Everything. So well done there. KB at one of the two flamethrow tanks I believe the Russians had. They also had a variant of the T-34 also modified for flamethrower usage. Enemy infantry is engaging us. So, fun fact there. Quick bomb grenade there against the shock troopers. And that really took out a huge chunk of them. But want? they need to get out of there. They desperately need to get out of there. And there go Pentagon is going to get an encounter with the flamethrower tank. Oh, a bit too slow there, and there we go, the KV-8 just burns its way through them. KV-8, very, very nasty flamethrower unit, but again, considering how late it is and its costs, I'd say it's, you know, worth it. But, yeah, looks like a second Tiger tank is rolling in there. Again, if only Messi Panda had been using his eyes a bit better, he might be looking slightly better in this case. And of course, we still got the veteran D2 Panzer Kampfwagner as well. So right here, there is some bad news for the Soviets. Very bad news, in fact. Mortar team moving up again. Fourteenth Mech Guards Mechanized Corps is very depleted. Very depleted. You need something demolished. Which, in some senses, were not uncommon. Russian units would also usually be pushed to the very brink, if not more. Ready. You need heavy armor support. Field gun getting recruited there. Panzerik picked up. Need to pull back the field gun, though. There we go. There we go, get some more infantry out. Conscripts, yes, yes. yes. Another combat in your squad will also pay off. And there you go, Panzer IV rolling in. Turn, turn. And there you go, the KV-8 gets spotted. Two Tiger tanks move up on its flank. Veterans one for another Tigers. That KV-8 has no chance. They might try and burn the Panzer guns, but that's it. That was a very short-lived KV-8. And there we go. The KV-8 is down. The Tiger scored the kill. Panzer is following up. And we of course also got that Panzer IV running straight into the field gun's fire. And there you go, IS-2 adds into the fire, conscripts moving up. And Titanic grenade. Again, pop smoke, pop smoke, so it is smoke. But no, Tiger's moving in to hit the flank. Field gun needs to be turned, he could try and call in some incendiary artillery on that. But no. He's actually going to move in the IS-2 to get the killing blow. And there we go. Again, there it is. Smoke, you silly person. Well, there we go. Tiger managed a shocking hit. Clearly, that Tiger is a bit of a shocker. Ha, ha, ha. There you go. IS-2 needs to pull back. Do not expose the site and rear armor. Come on, Messi Panda. Please try for the motherland. Or for your family about to be deported to Siberia. Our Tiger tanks continue to fire away, and there you go, IS-2 shocks the Tiger tank. And there we go. That was that IS-2. Rather wasted by Messi Panda. And game over.
Small team for mechanized guards. Tank core was pushed away in the face of the 5th SS and their Tiger support. Bit of a brutal game at times, but also in this play again, you know, slight problems with unit preservation. A failure to fully utilize the doctrine from the German commander, which again is would consider a bit of a sin, you know, not fully utilizing, not using the abilities. You could certainly get a lot more out of things with that smoke. But we also you know what happened when you go for the sort of one 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 sort of thing, you know. If you don't, you know, keep it together you'll likely find the bits cut off and killed. We also saw, you know, the problem for the Soviet player again was he hadn't enough infantry early on. He rather quickly, too quickly in fact, slowed down and allowed the German player to consolidate instead of constantly haranguing him and, you know, harassing him, which could definitely make greater gains for the Soviet player. And certainly shock troop was nice, but ultimately, I mean, in that sense, they wouldn't carry on in particular since he did not properly support the highest twos, not with field guns, not with the infantry to, you know, repair them constantly, in particular the first one was quite wasted, so that was definitely a shame, but there also some times when he should have pursued and knocked out whatever was being hunted down. So a lot of mistakes in that regard by the Soviet player, which rather allowed the German player, despite his mistakes, to ultimately carry through. Because ultimately, what Ceridius lacked in unit preservation in some regards, he made up for in aggressiveness, in initiative. He constantly kept pushing, even he probably shouldn't be, and ultimately that allowed him some chances, some risks, succeeding allowing him to gain the upper hand so there you go hope you enjoyed this match hope you learned something from it if you did why not subscribe to your friends if you didn't well why not send a replay of your own provide some feedback in the comments this is imperial dane saying cheers